Hey, welcome back, Internet friends. Uncle Gary here. First thing in the morning, where we're going to record this video. Why? I got a comment. Uncle Gary, I got to figure out the length of a rafter. And you know what? Make it as simple as possible so I can understand it. <laughs> well, this is the fourth time I'm doing this recording. Why? Because uh, figuring out the length of a raptor is really easy. But since I do it so often, I explain it. And when I got back looking at what I was doing, it was like, oh man, I, I, I don't even know what I was doing. But <laughs> I'm going to try to make it as simple as possible. So after this video, you'll be able to take any raptor and figure out the distance that you need. So folks, there's two distances you want when you're figuring out a rafter. You want from the peak down to where the bird mouth starts, and then you want from the peak the total distance down to the tail where the rafter ends. Now at the end of the video, I'm going to give you a third measurement that's going to make you look like a hero on the job site. Yeah, you can see it. Okay, guys, this example we're going to use. We got an 812 rise. The building's 16 foot wide. We have a ridge beam and we have sheeting. That's all you need to know. Well, that's actually not all you need to know, but. We got an 812 rise, the building's 16 foot wide, you got a ridge beam and you got a sheeting. Well, I know it's pretty obvious, but from here to the center is eight feet. And obviously from here to the peak is not eight feet because the rafter for every running foot here is actually longer than a foot. Just had to point that out. Okay, friends, in this portion, we're trying to figure out how long the raptor run is for every foot. Now, if you don't have one of these books, which more than likely you won't have on a job site, you might have a handy speed square, which, if you can read it, actually says common raptor length per foot run. You go down to eight inches and it shows you it's 14.42 inches hey but Gary I got my grandfather's old square no problem scrap piece of material put it on there just like you're doing an 812 pitch oh. mark it Mark it. Tape measure. Measure it. Oh, look at that. 14 and 3 eighths inches long. Now look. It's called rough framing for a, for a reason. Okay? A couple hundredths of an inch not going to affect anything. So, we said that was 14 and 3 eighths. I just said, hey Gary, God darn it though. The framing square said it was 14.42. Well, 14 and 3 eighths, if you want to break it down to a decimal, is 14.375. Do you really think five hundredths of an inch is going to make a difference in this calculation? It's not. So don't get too confused with the numbers. Don't get, don't, just make it simple on yourself, okay? It's rough framing. That's why they call it rough framing. They call it rough framing for a reason. Okay, there's my rack. But you say, hey Gary. I don't have a framing square. I don't have my grandfather's framing square. 
they sent me out to the job site. The only thing they sent me out to the job site was with my speed square and my tape. Huh. You can do that. It's very easy. It's pretty much the same thing. Grab yourself a piece of cardboard, right? Doesn't matter, scrap piece of wood. The same thing. We're gonna take, we're measuring down eight inches, okay? We're measuring over 12 inches. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna measure from here to here. Son of a gun, 14 and 3 eighths again. Let's try it again. Use just a piece of old scrap lumber. We're going down eight inches. We're going over 12 inches. You're measuring from that point to that point. 14 and 3 eighths. So folks, there's two distances you want when you're figuring out a rafter. You want from the peak down to where the bird mouth starts. Got 14.42 inches for every run for an 812. We got an eight foot center for the building. One, one, five. Point three six. We have a ridge beam and we have a sheeting. You got to take away for the ridge beam three quarters of an inch. You got to add for the sheeting a half inch. So you got to take away minus point two five. That's for the ridge beam and sheeting. So you come up to one one five point one one or one one five and one eighth inches. This is bird's mouth. We have a 16 inch overhang. And what we gotta do, is you gotta take your one four point four two, the length for every one per foot, that's the run per foot. You gotta divide it by 12. Gives you a number. And you multiply it by 16. That gives you 19. So we're gonna add 19. Gives you 134 and 1 eighth. That's the total length. Where do you place the ridge beam when you're rough framing it? If you would have said, this guy is pretty easy, eight foot long, eight, eight inch rise, you put it at 64 inches. Hey, guess what? You would be short. Do you know why you would be short? You would be short because you gotta add this distance from here to here. So you take yourself a piece of rafter material, you mark out the bird's mouth, and then you can measure from there to there, happens to be four inches. Oh, from the top of the wall to the top of the ridge beam is going to be, remember, eight times eight is 64 plus four is 68 inches. That was the bonus. Well, friends, I hope this ba this video made it a little bit easier to understand. Uh, just do it a few times. Get yourself some scrap lumber and try it.
It's really easy to do. Once you understand, there's actually only a couple measurements. But that bonus part at the end about where to put the ridge beam is really going to make you look like a professional. Hey, if you liked what you've seen on this video, give it a thumbs up. Leave a comment. Now's time to watch the animals eat. Thank <laughs> you.